Hello and welcome back to Mirka Chris. Today's a kind of special episode because we're going to be taking a look at my short films on DVD collection. There's quite a few. As of February just gone, I've been making short films for about 11 years. 11 years since I was 9 years old. And if you do the maths you could probably find out how old I am right now, so... Even though I do technically distribute my films online via YouTube and Vimeo, I do also like to do some DVD copies. This disc is a bit loose, so dear. I'm going to be showing you my, like, the last five years worth of films that I've been doing. Instead of the first five, I might do that in a different video, but I don't have the VHS tapes, because most of them were done on VHS and they're kind of back at home. The first film I have up is 1303. Now this is a special film to me. October 2011 I wrote and directed this like in one day and it was my short second attempt to get back into filmmaking after a couple of years of a huge hiatus. I was in year 10 of secondary school and it turned out somebody else in the school in the, in the same year as me was also into filmmaking and we bonded on that and we got into short filmmaking and he's the second lead in this film. But I didn't put it on YouTube to begin with. I put it straight onto DVD and I took it around my school. I had multiple copies that I could lend to people. They watched it and they quite liked it. I don't know if they really liked it because you know what it's like with showing friends and stuff. They're just kind of like, yeah, it was good. It's not a great film, but it's interesting to go back to have a look at and, you know, see where it all really kickstarted again. Following on from that, by the way, I'm showing you the films I wrote and directed to begin with. The second film made in March of 2012 was The Diary. Oops. Yeah, I guess I don't really look after these DVDs as well as my real DVDs. This was back when I like to kind of do things a bit differently, make things stand out. So The Diary was all wrote as one little word and then they're all lowercase letters even though it's a title and a name. I was different back then. <laughs> Probably one of the films I actually had the most fun on. I loved making this with some of the best friends I've ever had at the time. Like with 303, a really special film to me. I decided to star in this alongside some of my friends. Shot over a few weeks. Yeah. Followed by my third film, September 2012. I made, so I made quite a few films in 2012. And this one is Remember. Awful box art design, I agree. I think I try to imagine Remember as like a Liam Neeson type action film, so the poster is very reminiscent of his sort of like unknown and taken. But it doesn't really link into the film and it's kind of false advertising. I don't quite know why I did it. And it's just him standing in a kitchen with a gun. I guess it's kind of intriguing, maybe, maybe. This was actually a remake of one of my own films. Like I said, 1303 was my second attempt to get back into filmmaking after a while. My first attempt was literally about a week or two earlier. It was called Remember, and I never finished the edit because I just thought it was awful and I didn't want to show anybody it because it was just embarrassing and it was just terrible. And it was a lot worse than probably any of the films I've done since. It's that bad. I don't know, I went back to it when I didn't really have any other ideas and I don't hate it that much. I like some of the camera work, even if the lighting is terrible and I didn't really do much with the settings and the camera. But the actual camera work, there's some nice shots in there that I'm pretty proud of. Next up, the fourth film released through Ultimate Projects Productions, which, which by the way was my production team at the time that I founded, following on from CDR JDR Productions, which lasted from 2006 to 2011. I'll get into that, I don't know why I'm talking about that. But anyway, my fourth film was Tick. This is my joint first personal favourite of mine. It's actually my most viewed film on YouTube with about 800 and something views. A lot of people seem to like this one. Kathleen describes it as her favourite of mine. But then again, I don't know if that just means that the, my other films are bad and this one's kind of good. I got this one into a couple of film festivals in 2013 and 14, I think. In one of the festivals, it actually won a certificate for original visual narrative, which I was really proud of and I, I have the certificate back home. It's a short two minute psychological thriller to experimental film as well. The narrative plays out in a three way split screen. It's a silent film, so it only has a score going over the top that I made myself. I'm really proud of it because although it's a simple story, it has a really creepy element to it in my opinion. Check this one out. I'll actually leave a link to my, to my short film channel in the description below and specifically 
to this film and one that I'm going to mention in a few minutes later. My fifth film, this one was released in 2013 and it is For I Have Sinned. I actually made this for my VTech art project in year 11, I think it was. I think I got full marks for it as well. We went to do something actually physically art related, but I actually asked if I could make a short film instead, and my art teacher really generously allowed me to, and I produced my longest film to this date. It's about 15 minutes long. It has a very TV drama sort of feel to it. With this, I kind of felt that kind of like a theatrical sort of taste would go with it. But you can see quite a lot in the editing and the music choices and the way the camera moves and stuff. This was actually the first film I shot in a DSLR, which is specifically this DSLR that I'm shooting this video on. And now we're on to the final film that I actually wrote and directed in Ultimate Project Productions. This one is also 2013, October of 2013. Small little psychological horror. Unbidden. Now this is my personal favourite film. You, you won't see them the same way I do. I see these for personal stuff and this is my personal favourite. I think it's the best looking film that I've done maybe. Again another short two minute film. I want to do another two minute film at some point to kind of make it like a little psychological trilogy of mine because I have Tick which is two minutes that's a psychological film and this is another kind it has experimental vibes and uh, kind of has a creepy element to it. I agree there is a moment that is very amateurish but I don't mind because it's it's meant to be a bit weird. It's meant to get you to think more than anything. I, I just really, I'm really proud of this. Minus a few shots where some things go a bit wrong. So like I said earlier, I think you should check out Tick and Unbidden, if any of them. Now before we get to my most recent films, I'm going to take a look at some films I helped produce and maybe get some of the cinematography on uh, for my good friend Dylan. And that was Mob, which I don't know if you can watch on YouTube because it keeps getting taken down through copyright strikes because Dylan had a habit of putting actual licensed music in his films, which gave it a quirky vibe. Kind of reminds me of Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese, but it's a shame. This was his first film in Ultimate Projects Productions because I, I wanted him to make some films in Ultimate Projects Productions to really get other people to make short films as well as me. Maybe my favorite of his that he's done, The Man in the Hat. I designed all of these box arts, by the way. Even though it's my good friend Dylan's film, I did the DVD artwork just so you know his final film that i have on dvd which is vice this might also be my favorite poster that i've designed which is me my good friend connor and my good friend dylan all of these are taken from screenshots of the film it's kind of cool i think it's kind of cool this also has a few licensed music in it he has stopped doing that now yeah it adds a bit of charm to the films i think so i don't really have any, anything against him having used them in the past this one's actually a fun film and although we do have another dylan nicholson short film in ultimate project productions known as peak which is a short three minute horror film i don't have a box art for it because i could never figure out a decent box art I'll have to do it at some point because it's left out of the collection, but yeah, that's it for Ultimate Project Production Films. And now we're on to my latest production company name, which is Unbidden Pictures. Uh, yeah, it's named after the last film that was ever released in Ultimate Pro Projects Productions, which was Unbidden. And as I mentioned, my personal favourite short film that I've done, it has a nice ring to it. Unbidden pictures. The first film I did was back in December of last year, which was Fall of a Nation, the prologue. Maybe this is the best shot, uh, best looking short film I've done. It's the first film that I used my glide cam on. Some stuff in this I really like. Check it out if you want. It's a, I think it, it's technically good. Maybe not narratively. I'm starting to have issues with it as the more I watch it, but technically I really like this film and I'm looking forward to making some more Fall of a Nation anthology films in in the future. And I do have one more short film in Unbidden Pictures, but I don't have a physical DVD release of it. The Contract Killers at Christmas, which a lot of my friends and family actually seem to really like, uh, which was surprising to me because I thought that it would be Fall of a Nation that would get talked about, but I guess it's not really that good, which is a bit of a shame because that was my passion project, whereas Contract Killers was just kind of a last minute thing. It was incredibly rushed. A lot of the script doesn't really make sense because I only did one draft and then all of a sudden we were shooting it and stuff didn't really get changed and then we didn't get to film the actual ending and I had to figure out a way of doing it without actually having some of the actors there. But anyway, here's a, a quick look at, here's a little, what the heck was that? Here's a quick look at what I'm actually working on for an actual printout. It'll be fun when I actually have a printout of it and have it alongside the rest of my collection. 
And he is the moment that, that I've been looking forward to. He is the actual full set of those films. You'll notice how they all line up and match up. I'm kind of proud of that because I designed them from 1303 to be that way. I like having my DVDs and Blu-rays kind of match up if they're related to each other. They look consecutive in design and follow that through with Unbidden Pictures 1. It is kind of pointless having them on DVD when they're all online everywhere, but I like to own a copy of a film, like a physical copy. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you at least kind of enjoyed the video because this one's a bit more of a personal thing to me, you know, because it's my first short films. Uh, if you liked the video, why not like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. And I really hope you do because I'd love to see you around the channel more often. Thanks for watching. Bye. What, what? 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 What's this? Oh. It looks like we'll have to wait and find out in a different video now, doesn't it? <laughs>